Hello and welcome to this Medic Mind tutorial where today we're going to be looking at abstract reasoning question types. And our learning objectives today are fourfold, they're very simple, we're going to be looking at type 1 questions, type 2, type 3 and type 4 questions. And in case you forgot, here's a brief recap on the timing in abstract reasoning. This is a very fast paced section, you've got 13 minutes to do 55 questions. What's helpful to know though, is that they're organized into 11 sets of five. In other words, there are 11 patterns, each associated with five questions. That gives you roughly 71 seconds per set, or if you're being a bit stricter, roughly a minute per set. Let's look first at type one questions then. These are the ones that you'll be familiar with because they're the most common type in abstract reasoning. You're given one set, set A, and another set, set B, and you're asked to find the pattern in each one. You're then given a series of test shapes and asked to allocate whether they go into set A or set B. And remember there are five questions per pattern, which gives you roughly 60 seconds per pattern. And here's an example of a type one question now. Pause the video and have a go for yourself. Okay, going through it together. So the important thing to recognize here is that we've got set A, set B, and then we've got a series of test shapes. This is a type one question. Let's focus on set A first of all. You can see instantly that these patterns are organized into either plus shapes or cross shapes. That's an important observation and it's not one that you should overlook. If this is done almost artistically, it's definitely part of the pattern. If we look at that more closely, it might be interesting to know what governs whether a shape is a cross or a plus. You can see that in set A, it's a plus orientation if we've got shapes on the end of mixed colors. In contrast, it's a cross orientation if all of the shapes are white. And there's no examples where all of the shapes are black. Contrast that to set B. Set B has a cross shape when all of the shapes attached are black. And it has a plus shape when all of the shapes attached are white. And there's no mixed shapes. In other words, there's no mixture of black and white in the same example. Now this is quite a convoluted rule because it's got a kind of sub rule in each set, but that is the rule nonetheless. So if we work through our test shape examples, number one has a cross shape orientation with a mixed black and white picture. This doesn't belong to set A because set A requires a plus orientation for that kind of pattern. And set B remember has no sort of mixture of black and white. So this belongs to neither. If we then move on to test shape number two, we've got that plus type of orientation with mixed black and white. That belongs to set A. If we look at orientation number three, or test shape number three, sorry, we've got a cross orientation and all of those shapes attached are black. That fits the definition for set B. Looking at test shape number four, we've got a plus orientation. So we know that it, if it's mixed, it has to go in set A or if it's all white, it goes into set B. In this case, it's all white, so this belongs to set B. And finally, with test shape number five, we've got that cross orientation. All of the shapes are white. That belongs to set A. So this is important to stress that type one questions are the key. They're the most common type of question that you get in the UCAT and therefore it's most important that you get into the hang of answering these questions and that you can answer them correctly. Try and perfect your performance on type 1 questions before you then move on to addressing type 2, type 3 and type 4 questions. Let's move on to type 2 kind of questions. Type 2 questions are all about a sequence of shapes and we're asked what is the next shape or what is the next example in this sequence. Now this one, you only get one pattern per question. In other words, you've got 15 seconds to answer that sequence and then the next question is completely different. It doesn't follow any sort of continuation. That means that they can be more time pressured, but often they're easier questions. Because there's a sequence, because you can follow one shape to another, you can often see that there's a rotation at play, there's a movement or maybe a colour inversion. They're quite easy to spot the pattern. So that's why they're a shorter amount of time per question. And here's an example of that kind of question here. Pause the video now and have a go at this one on your own. So 
So the answer here was D, and well done if you got that correct. Looking at the sequence that they give you, you can see on the far left, we've only got one shape. For each additional example, we get a shape added in. More importantly, that shape added in is always a black shape. So if we look at the examples and the test shape that we're given the question for, what completes the sequence? Well, actually the next sequence along will have five shapes in it. And that new shape that's added has to be black. That's what makes the answer D. Now let's look at type three questions. These are questions where you're given a sort of relationship between two different shapes and you're asked to apply that relationship to a separate example. It's much easier when we work through the example next. Like before, this is one question per pattern. And that means that you get 15 seconds to answer the question and then the next question is completely different. It's not in any way related to the previous one. And here's an example of a type three question. Pause the video now and have a go. So the way type three questions work is that we're given a relationship between two shapes, in this case with the pentagons. We're given the white pentagon is to the black pentagon as the white triangle is to blank. The key here is to look at what changed with the pentagons and apply it to what changes with the triangles. So in this case, the white pentagon goes to a black pentagon. There's a color switch. In addition, you might notice that there's a change in the sort of orientation of that pentagon. Looking more closely, it's a 90 degree rotation towards the left, if you like. As a result, the answer is A, an anti-clockwise 90 degree rotation and a color switch from white to black. So you find the rule in the top example and you apply that rule to the bottom example. Now a key timing tip here is to remember that type two and type three questions require less time. They're quicker to do because they're easier, but nonetheless, you've got a limited amount of time to do them. You've got 15 seconds per question. It's therefore important that you be equally as vigorous with these questions and equally as thorough in terms of finding the question pattern and then moving on. And our final type of question is type four questions. And these are very similar to type one questions. Basically, you're given two sets, set A and set B, but in this case, you're given a series of test shapes and you're asked which one in this series belongs to set A or set B. It's easier with an example, but again, you've got five questions per pattern, much like the type one questions, which gives you roughly 60 seconds to analyze that pattern. So let's do an example together. Pause the video now and have a go. Okay, here you can see we've got set A and set B, much like type one questions. But if we look at where we can put our answers, we're actually given a slightly different kind of question. Rather than being given individual test shapes and asked whether they belong to set A, set B or neither, we were asked which one of these belongs to set A. The same principles apply though, we've still got to find the pattern first. In set A, we can see that the black shape, the bigger one, is sort of a circle. Whereas in set B, the black shape is a square. If we look at the inner shape, we can see that in set A, they've all got straight edges. Whereas in set B, they've all got curved edges. These are the patterns at play. So if we then look at the questions, which of the following fits into set A? Well, it'll be the one with the black circle and a straight edged inner shape. In other words, that's D. If we then move on to the next one, which of the following fits into set B? Well, we're looking for a shape with a black square being the bigger shape and then an inner shape, which is curved. Which one fits that? Well, it's answer number C. And finally, the final question in this case, which of the following fits into set B? Remember that we're looking for a black square with a curved inner shape. That means that we're looking at answer D here. And those are our take home points. We looked at type one, type two, type three, and type four questions, the differences between them, as well as how they use a common set of skills, analyzing those patterns as quickly as possible. 